So, so now we're going to kind of pivot into getting into the tool a little bit directly and uh, talking through kind of some, some demos that we put together that just show some of the core functionality, a lot of it's stuff that Paul talked about earlier as he went through his presentation. So we're going to talk about um, three main uh, demos. First one, I'm going to start out with kind of a service management or service request um, demo where we're just going to talk through kind of how Insight can be leveraged to assist in Jira service management with um, kind of service requests to, to IT customers, things like that. Uh, and then Brian's going to cover uh, an incident management demo. It's going to include um, both Insight and Ops Genie, uh, and then also Jira service management. Um, and then if we have time, depends on whether Steve kicks us off here or not, uh, we'll talk about change management, which will include um, kind of CI CD tool. In this case, we're going to use Bitbucket and, and pipelines uh, and Jira service management. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and let's jump into the tool. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is um, basically acting as a customer. Um, hopefully you guys are seeing JIRA here um, and Jira Service Management Portal. So as a customer, the first place we end up, right? And if you're not familiar with Jira Service Management, um, Jira Service Management we gathers. We webinar for it too. Yeah, we got a webinar for that too. Um, we got a webinar for everything. Uh, and so we do have a, a kind of a, an introduction to, to Jira Service Management webinar, but if you're not familiar with the tool, everything's in and all the tickets come in through a portal. You can use email request tickets as well, but we recommend always pushing people through the portal because it gives you a lot more uh, granularity in your request types. And so when you access the portal, um, we were able to submit a various different types of requests, all of which have different forms. So when you're looking at different forms, you get lots of different fields that gotta be filled in to fill this out. So we're gonna come in as a customer, we're requesting a new laptop. Now I'm logged in as Brian, so I'm gonna go ahead and and submit tickets on behalf of him. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is, is the first thing they ask is reason for requesting a new laptop. We're gonna say, okay, our current laptop is damaged. We're gonna go ahead and select the current equipment's damage. We're gonna say, I threw my laptop at my coworker. Is that, is that allowed? No? We have a very liberal laptop <laughs> replacement <laughs> policy at XP. Yeah, we do. Um, and then the cool thing is we'll come down here and it's actually gonna get us options for which model we would like based on what's in stock. And so I'm actually going to grab this. I'm not, I'm not really a MacBook kind of person. So I'm going to grab this ThinkPad down here because um, that's what I'd like to, to, to transition to. I got a MacBook currently, and I'd like to, I'd like to shift over to Windows again um, and get back in the, the world of sanity here. And so I'm going to go ahead and submit this ticket. And so now as a customer, I've submitted a request. I've said, OK, I'd like to get a ThinkPad. Um, and in theory, that the list of options there is filtered by ones that are available. Because if something's not available, you don't really want the customer to be requesting it necessarily. Um, but that's up to you whether you want to do the stock um, checks in the back end or automatically do stock checks uh, in your inventory. So as we're looking out here at the, at the customer portal, we've got a few options out here. Um, the customers are going to manage their communication with the agents from this view. But as an agent, we're going to be working primarily in the back end. And so you'll see that we're waiting for an approval here. Uh, that approval's going to reach out to probably our manager. So let's go ahead and check over into the agent side. We're going to get there by hitting this, this little issue key up here. So once we're looking at the agent side, the agent's going to see this request. They're going to open it up, and they're going to see immediately that they've selected a requested model. But they're not only going to see this. Over here on the right, you're going to see that automatically an approver was selected here, who is uh, Brian's manager, it's Vicky. Okay, and that was grabbed based on uh, we'll look at this in a second, but based on our Insight instance where there is users tied to departments and all departments have managers. So we'll look at that here in a second as well. But you'll also see this little effective equipment tab down here. Insight using automation, uh, or actually Jira using automation, went into Insight and found uh, his laptop, the current existing laptop, and automatically updated it to damage. Um, this, it's now damaged, and we can also see the warranty. So in this case, it's still under warranty. Um, so we may be able to get a replacement, depending on how it was damaged. We probably might want it to be a little bit <laughs> different with our uh, damage reason, right? So but it automatically grabbed that, set it to damage, and then as the agent, I can come over here and say, okay, he wants one of these. Well, let me go ahead and open this up. All right, status, you know, it's currently offered. Great, that's, what, that's our filter for our field. Um, I can pull open the... Uh, details and I can see, you know, we have one available here. It's in stock and it's, you know, it comes from Lenovo and I can actually open up this one, the actual um, item itself, and I can see, hey, there's one in St. Louis. Awesome. But let's, we're going to navigate into the back end, into the uh, inside side. 
So when we pull up Insight, we'll see, you know, currently there's this asset is in stock. Uh, we can actually pull up uh, the models. We can show where they're ordered from, who the vendor is, all that stuff. Um, but in this case, we're going to go ahead and say, we've got one in stock, we've got one available. And not only is it available, it's also in St. Louis, where I'm located. Um, and we can edit this, change the status to in use, um, and fulfill the ticket right here um, utilizing Insight to, to connect that back to, um, to the customer. And so then we can assign this to that customer's name. And now they'll have a brand new laptop. We can get that delivered to them today, have all that communication over in the ticket. Um, and then if we go back to kind of our list of laptops here in Insight, we can see right here at the top, Brian's laptop is damaged. And we can also follow up on this particular asset. We can follow up with um, the warranty claim. We can follow up with getting a replacement started. All of that can happen either here or on the JIRA side using automation to uh, pull that information out of Insight. Um, and so that's just kind of a basic overview of that, that service management process. Brian, do you have anything else you, you want to add to that? Um, I was going to say that, uh, you know, just to point out that all of these automations are, are helping your, your, service, your service fulfillment team do their jobs more effectively. And as, uh, as James pointed out in his, in his presentation, everything's really flexible. And so, so these are all um, these are automations that we built that will automatically add add the affected asset, update the affected asset, update the affected um, the affected um, approver, and you and you and your teams can modify these based on your needs. So it's a really flexible tool. And so the last thing I want to say is as we talk about insight and the various things at play here, obviously we've got our IT employee asset schema in play, which is talking about all the laptops that we have, the monitors, the phones, things like that. But also in play in this automation, we've got an employee schema that handles employees, departments, all of that. We've got a CMDB in place, uh, which is actually built from a uh, discovery. We talked about, uh, Paul briefly mentioned network discovery that Insight manages. And so you can actually run, just like other asset management tools, network discovery. And it can build out a huge database of, of network discovery uh, assets. And you can manage that all here um, you saw a screenshot of this earlier. This place. is just live in the tool. Yeah, this is a real, a real poll from a network um, showing actual, actual assets. So um, the possibilities are endless. Anything that you would want to manage uh, individual objects in, Insight does a great job of not only managing the objects, but connecting natively to your service management.